All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about what is unarguably the benchmark for quality bushcrafting knives. For me, there are a handful of knives out there that do exist, and I do think that there is at least one honorable mention. But in my opinion, I think that there is one knife that we're going to be talking about today that sets the gold standard or truly the benchmark for quality and price point. This is, I think, the absolute level of perfection. It's almost impossible to beat this knife unless you find maybe a Black Friday sale, Black Friday deal, and you maybe get something else, which we'll also talk about um, here in a little bit. But to be fair, I think the benchmark, what I use to genuinely measure other bushcrafting knives um, on this channel is this knife here, or at least some facet, of, some facet of this knife. Now, what this is, what you guys are looking at here, is a pretty crispy, pretty clean Mora Garberg. And I had to add one of these back to my collection because believe Believe it or not, some people are gonna be like, oh, you've never used this knife. And true, this one has not been used, full disclosure. But if you guys have been around this channel for any length of time whatsoever, you guys know that I not only have had a Garberg previously, but I actually have an extensive list of knives that I have placed against the bar <laughs> against the Garberg, if I can uh, English correctly today. Um, things such as, in my opinion, one of my favorite knives that exists, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This was actually, I think, the first knife that I put up against in a direct use um, comparison against the Garberg. And I will say the Garberg is a really honestly pretty incredible knife because for what you're getting, and I got this knife for $68, you can still go on Amazon and get it for about $68. Um, you can get the stainless option or you can get the carbon version. I chose the carbon version this time um, partially because I actually just like the blacked out aesthetic of the carbon version, but also too, I wanted to try the carbon version as opposed to the stainless. So I picked up the carbon version this time. <clears throat> Previously, I had also had the stainless version, which was in 14C28N, which in my opinion too, um, especially because ever since I've actually kind of had more knives and played with steel a little bit more, I actually really do like 14C28N. It is a genuinely pretty admirable steel. So anyways, like I said, this is the benchmark of bushcrafting knives in my opinion. I think penny per pound, this is really going to be one of the best knives. Now, a tender to that list would be the Topps Fieldcraft. Now, I say the reason why this is a contender is unfortunately, when these first released the Topps Fieldcraft, these were about $100 to $120, which is still, even to this day, nearly double the price of a Garberg, but for a legitimately larger knife, thicker blade tang, and you know, a little bit higher quality materials, this is genuinely a good contender. Now, I feel a little bit mixed about it because I do love the um, Topps Fieldcraft. However, unfortunately, this knife is no longer a very cheap knife. Uh, these things go up to about $140. And so unfortunately, this is still will be a runner up. This is a decent place though, I will say, um, for a good learning knife. Like even at the $140 mark, it's still a really solid you know, knife to learn, to gain skills. And honestly, it could be a forever knife. It could be an end goal knife. And we're gonna be doing a video in a little bit, um, or at some point there will be a video released on what I think are end goal knives. And I think honestly, this Topps Fieldcraft, even the Garberg could be a genuinely good end goal knife. Now, another one that I think is really solid, um, I wanted to do two honorable mentions. So the Topps Fieldcraft and the Cold Steel Master Hunter. Now the Master Hunter is a little bit different because you'll notice with the Garberg, and with the Topps Fieldcraft, they both have very proud Scandinavian grinds. And so depending on what type of mindset you're in with bushcrafting and survival practice um, or wilderness living practice, you know, a full flat grind might not be your style, but actually it might be because I know um, one of my personal friends and one of my favorite now partially retired bushcrafting YouTubers, MCQ or Michael from MCQ Bushcraft, he for a very long time carried four bushcraft multi-day solo outings a or an SC6 paired with an SC Azula. So both of those knives are full flat ground. So depending on your style of bushcrafting, a full flat ground knife can genuinely be a solid performer. So I will say um, this knife is really good. The Master Hunter, of course, this is in CPM 3V. This can be found. I got mine for $89. So 
we're talking a little bit under $100, certainly cheaper than the Topps Fieldcraft. Now, of course, it is a smaller knife than the Fieldcraft, honestly, not by much, but it is a slightly smaller knife. Um, so the Fieldcraft is still the largest. It is um, a little bit bigger than your Garberg, but it is going to be basically around the same size as a Garberg. So um, also we'll say it's a little, a little bit thicker than the Garberg. So the Garberg's about an eighth of an inch thick, whereas the uh, Master Hunter is about five thirty seconds. So keep that in mind but those are my two runner-ups but like i said the true honest to god winner to this is the garberg i think the garberg is such a hard knife to beat i've also been seeing some really cool modifications where people where people have been taking the um, clip point so this is a clip pointed knife for those who don't know um, and rounding it off to make it more of a bush lore style blade for me i'm slightly like i kind of want to try it out but i also kind of don't want to try it out just because the one disadvantage that you'll notice with mo most of your moras that even your thicker ones they have a reasonably um, narrow blades so if you you know round this off you're just removing material and the mora doesn't have a lot of material to remove to boot so you can see things like the master hunter and even the field craft you know have a solid quarter to half inch of width on them as opposed to the mora garber it's very it's very narrow blade it's only just over an inch in width so you know take that for what it's worth that's the only thing i dislike about it but it is a little bit unfortunate <clears throat> now the I did mention that the width is the only thing I dislike. The only other thing I dislike is the fact that it does not have a rubberized handle. Um, things such as, once again, your uh, Master Hunter is going to have a fully rubberized handle, and I think that, that is a really huge uh, win for that knife, whereas this is a fully um, plastic handle, which part of me does like the fully plastic for the one reason that dirt and just garbage doesn't tend to stick itself to you know plastic as opposed to rubber but for the huge advantage that you get with having a rubberized handle in cold climates i think it would be worth having a rubberized handle especially once again comparing things like the master hunter things like even cheaper more as like your companion clipper series knives um, things like other cheap knives like the more robust Bust also has a rubberized handle so it's kind of a little bit unfortunate when like your budget moras have in my opinion a better handle than your more expensive moras so i get that they would probably want to um, you know emanate or make it feel like a higher quality knife and so that might be why they moved away from the you know rubberized handle because a lot of their cheap knives have rubberized handles but personally in my opinion a rubberized handle um, once again especially looking in you know more arctic environments it is definitely appreciated as opposed to just a straight plastic handle because there is definitely a lot less grip on this than there is on the master hunter however once again you still can't beat it it is an absolutely incredible knife if for some reason you've gotten this far in bushcrafting and wilderness living and you haven't already picked up a garberg i would highly recommend it i mean they are you know, among the list of other good workhorses, the Master Hunter is a great workhorse. The Field uh, Craft is a great workhorse. Um, if you're really looking to step up into a slightly more expensive but still sub $100 workhorse, the Garberg is basically impossible to go wrong with. So definitely wanted to add one to the list um, because I'm going to be doing a lot more field tests in the summer, hopefully, depending. If no one watches them, then we will not do as many field tests on the channel. But I know I get a lot of requests of, you know, like, when are you going to do more field tests? I want to see out in the field more. And there's a whole myriad of reasons I might make a video on it. But uh, yeah, there's a whole myriad of reasons why I'm not doing field tests at the moment. Um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that where I live, there is over five, depending where you're at, five to seven feet of snow on the ground. So even if I you know, was able to go outside and physically do a lot of those tasks, there is an incredible amount of snow on the ground, more than um, we've seen here in Alaska in a while. So this isn't like um, an average winter per se but our winter is definitely proving to be quite an interesting one. So I am unable to really get out into the woods where there is feet of snow and run my tests. However, once again, this guy is 
the Garber as a whole is something that I've extensively field tested. And while this one is unused, um, I have put a ton of mileage on Garbergs as a whole. So when I hold this one, I know I'm like, I know what a Garberg can and can do 100%. Like there's no question in my mind. I know what a Garberg can and can't do. And once again, I've put it head to head against things like the Fieldcraft, the Bushcrafter, um, the Strong Arm, and a whole bunch of other knives. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless. And I'm out. <clears throat>